It's all built up to this. TI9 is almost here. Time for the preview show. Yes, TI9 is but a few days away. And it's time for the new meta preview show ahead of our daily TI9 pod starting on Thursday with the beginning of the group stages. Every day, straight after the action, we'll be releasing a quick 45 minute pod with all the analysis, all the review of the drama and indeed the action as it unfolds over in Shanghai. With me today for this big preview, Marco, immortal, big EG fanboy, how are you doing? We're actually introducing ourselves again. Nah, we... I don't think so, but maybe we'll have some new listeners that are just here for some okay. TI9 Pro discussions. So, Yeah, hopefully. Welcome to new listeners. Thanks for having me, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> very excited. Yeah, very excited yeah. for TI. Thursday, my goodness, it's so close. Oh, no, it actually is. We were really hoping that we'd be able to do this preview show with the groups, hence why it's quite delayed. We were going to do it a couple of days ago. The groups aren't even out yet, but we can't wait any longer for this show or else we'll release it and then the games will be starting in like a few hours or something. So it's really not worth it. So we'll just do it now without the groups. But yeah, welcome Adam too. Welcome to the show, bro. Excited for TI? Yep. Shame uh, shame we couldn't have the groups. It sure is. Why yeah. can't you guys just be uh, more dedicated and stay up till 3 a.m. <laughs> just to see group announcements? Yeah, and then pod straight away at like 4 a.m. Yeah. Then- edit and release for 5 a.m sleep for 6 a.m that's a schedule i could get behind yeah time zones man the first ti were time zones like new time zones i wasn't around when it was in europe like back in the day that was just days. once that was ti1 yeah no one was around <laughs> yes yeah true but yeah adam you're not going to just be able to well i don't know because i suppose it's during the work day anyway but time zones are a bit messed up i don't know no, for the actual event? Yeah, because it's true. Actual events, like at night. Yeah, it's true. Get back from work. And it works just... out for me. <laughs> like, a start at 9, a, or 9 p.m., go to 9 a.m., just through the night. Yeah, true. It's, oh, it, it must, well, it will feel so bad when, so you get to start watching it, so you, like, get home from work, evening time, oh, my God, so hype, see the start of every day, and then it gets to, like, midnight, and you got you got to tell yourself, fuck, I've actually got to turn this stuff turn this off and go to sleep that must that is gonna i mean my normal i normally go to sleep at like two so change out to three for ti (laughs) yeah or get us wake up earlier or something just pound some monster energies i uh not not sponsored or anything but i drank (laughs) one uh for the first time in a while when i was driving back uh to school this week and I felt like my heart was going to explode. <laughs> like, those things are intense. Yeah. Sometimes coffee gets me. If I'm really tired, like I'm really tired um, and I need sleep, but for some reason I need to stay up um, and I like, I'll have a coffee. In those moments, it feels like I've had like four coffees. Time and place and how tired and exhausted you are I feel like everything's just amplified. And then you go to Stockholm Major and just live off like three monsters a day doesn't feel yeah. a thing it's a true i mean what that's intense man esports environment you just soak up the energy drinks it's for fun i'm a responsible drinker though adam don't worry I take it 50 milliliters at a time way back um the mlg columbus tournament i went to we were at like you know rtz had his first land and stuff um their sponsors were Dr. Pepper and Flips. Look up Flips if you've never heard of them. Uh, F-L-I-P-Z. They're just like co- chocolate-covered pretzels. And so they had as much, oh, yeah. di- or, uh, as much Dr. Pepper and Flips as you wanted. <laughs> and it was like, felt so sick. Or like, it felt so great on Friday. It's like, yeah, you know, well, I hate Dr. Pepper. All my friends were going crazy. It's like, yeah, we get to have all the Dr. Pepper we want, all the flips we want. And then fast forward to Sunday, everyone just feels like death because all they've been doing is eating salty chocolate pretzels yeah. and drinking Dr. Pepper. 
Yeah, the, the can... ESL Frankfurt equivalent is Red Bull and Schnitzel. For anyone who attended <laughs> Red Bull that and event. Schnitzel. Yeah. Um, so, TI9 preview. I feel like let's just start with the headlines, the main teams, the sort of tier one teams, as it were. Okay, Ogre and Wind Ranger. <laughs> yeah, the true TI. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, the true TI. Yeah. In terms of putting teams into tier one, like the teams to watch, Marco, I mean, what do you reckon are the top teams? Because for me, I feel like I'm looking at Secret, Virtus Pro, Vici, EG, and LGD, and then maybe maybe Liquid as well as a, as like a top tier one. This is a team that could very well win it. Or how do you see it? Do you think there's more tiers within that tier one? I think you could have an S an S tier of Secret and Vici. Yeah, I think because that would be fair enough. Secret, ever, I mean, obviously finishing top of the DPC says a lot. Um, and they have just looked so dominant. They, in these games, they're like best of three, best of five. The drafting is so varied. Individually, every player is so good. But then Vici, I would add to that category as well because they have won the last two majors, I believe. And although a quiet start to the season winning the last two majors that's including secrets performing at those events as well mm, they won like, they've won the last major then the then they did very poorly at the one before that but they won the one before that so not, oh, two, so not, not two in a row but two of the last three they've won yeah so that kind of performance is still super strong and yeah speaks for itself and then i do think those two put themselves just a notch ahead of VP, EG, LGD, because those three guys, they haven't had massive tournament like championships, if you like. They've always For been placing really yeah. high, but they've never really been breaking those first place finishes as frequently. Um, so I'd say tier one for those three. Yeah, VP are an interesting team because they've come, they won the KL major at the start of the season, the first major. Then they got second and second. Well, at the Chongqing Major and Dream League Season Eleven, and then MDL, they they're nowhere. They're like eight, like ninth to sixteenth or something, and then they do come, they do recover to come third. Epicenter, it's at Moscow. I mean, read into that what you will. They it, they feel like I don't know, like I don't want to say a downward trajectory because at the end of the day, it is VP, and they they can always. I mean, do they're this, nowhere but... near as dominant as they were last season no. i think that's actually going to benefit them a little because last season they were almost too dominant because last season in the DPC, well it's just you knew it wasn't going to maintain yeah like you just can't win every tournament the entire year you it just hasn't been you can't uh, and then the pressure is too much and then people are going to figure you out people are going to want to figure you out because they were the one team that were just smashing everyone for fun hmm. get to ti they can't live up to the to the pressure people are hunt down to hunt them they just crack crumble do crap here, I think it actually is a little bit beneficial that the finish in the season, like you say, they start strong, end a little bit weak. But I think it actually is going to help them to to not be under pressure and to find their own mojo and to be kind of out the spotlight. And then I would love to see them push push for top four. I think they would be expecting to get top four. It's about whether they can push into that final, I think, that grand final. Um, Adam, what do you think? Do you think the... The S tier, would you agree with the S tier of Vici Secret and then the A tier of VP, EG, LGD? Or how would you put those those top tier teams? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. I think there's five teams and then Liquid's a wild card. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> there's just not as much data on Liquid after, you know, a big roster shuffle. Mm. Uh, picking up Weeha. From a Tumba man, um, so they can definitely make a run. I wouldn't necessarily say it'd be like a surprise or like an upset because they did, you know, get second in the last major. In the last two, only one with uh, Weeha though, right? Or was it? No, it was Matum- it was Matumba man in Paris. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I would say that there's like. The S tier is is secret. <laughs> yeah, almost. It's true. I don't know. That might just be European bias. Uh, S plus tier secret. <laughs> S tier Vici, and then 
LGD Virtus Pro and then Evil Geniuses because they just third place. Third place is a charm for EG. Yeah, but then having said that, it's like LGD, what have they really done this year? It's true. It's just going off of last year. Yeah, they, the best they've done in the majors is two fourth places. I mean, that is quite poor, really, when you consider that the you know reigning finalists from from and Europe. yet they were just like a safe bet to qualify. They didn't even have to like really do anything, you know. Yeah, they, the whole season they qualified. They're just like with, safe. You, yeah, that's the crazy thing about DBC. You come fourth in one major and you've qualified. I mean, literally, um, one thousand one hundred. You just had to beat six, seven, eight. Yeah, you just had to get fourth once. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, I guess Nip, that one tournament they had with... Uh, mind Control. Uh, mind Control, that was enough Yeah. for them to get in. But also, if you took all their other results, that was enough as well. Yeah. So it's like, they got in just fine. But if you look at the top six teams, which is Secret, VP, Vici, EG, Liquid, and PSG, LGD... There's like a dramatic drop off between sixth and seventh. They like double Very the points from like yeah. five thousand to twenty eight hundred. So those top six teams were the most consistent. And even then, there's really just three teams that have over eleven thousand points. So it's it's really secret VP and Vici, I think. Hmm. Then again, all you need to do is spike one tournament like OG did, right? You just need to figure it out and have a little bit of magic. Yeah, definitely. A little bit of luck, a little bit of sad. <laughs> a little bit of LGD throw. You'll be there. Mm-hmm. Tiny tosses. Yeah. It's all got to transpire for you. Secret are an interesting team because on the one hand, I, I think, yes, they have the biggest target on their back, no doubt, because they have been the most dominant team this year. But at the same time, I don't feel like, and obviously I am i don't know because I'm not a pro player, but when I watch Secret play, it doesn't seem their play style doesn't seem as well defined as like say watching Virtus Pro a year ago or even watching Team Liquid two years ago when they were coming into TI as, as probably the favourites. I know VP were also like co-favourites for TI7. But Secret play all sorts of stuff. They're just so good and they play different strats. They have their like common openers. They love first picking Enigma for example. Um, but I really feel like there are harder... Teams might struggle to just grind secret replays and try and figure the team out so i'll be really interesting to see what they bring to the table puppy i honestly think puppy just could just draft yeah he could just draft anything it doesn't matter what they've been doing this year he might just play a bunch of scrims and be like right i think techies let's do techie strat you know what i mean he could uh, he could just throw the sink out i don't think they're wings level of unpredictable right but i do think is what you said. They're not as defined in a style. They can pick whatever they want. They'll have PA games, right? Or yep. then they'll like bust out Naga TB games. They'll illusion hero you, or they'll just, I mean, whatever's comfortable. And they can do Zai basically playing a three and a half that lets the Absor get a ton of farm on a greedy four. Yeah. And Zai just makes space. Uh, they can do mid one playing almost anything. Uh, they can do chin stuff. They can do IO stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, they, yeah. It's just very open, so it's tough to draft against. It's no coincidence that Puppy's strongest period of dominance, really, in the pro scene since TI one is coming now, when he's got a team that they're not necessarily superstars or stars for sure. But it's not like a flashy team secret like you've seen in the past. But this team secret, like we've been saying, is so versatile in what everyone can play and the, the heroes and the, the play styles and the strategies. And it's like how I was, there was an OG No Tail interview that I watched yesterday. I, th- I think it was recorded very recently. I think it was on the Dota 2 TI YouTube page. And someone one of the questions was alluding to what separates the best teams from like the tier two teams and no tails answer was, I think everyone's mechanical ability at the at tier one and two is on par and no one's really got much of an edge. And it, it comes down to strategy. I think that makes a team, a tier one team and it just matches how secret are so good because they're not reliant on one or two or three comfort styles or 
lineups. They got so much at the utensil. Hmm. Um, and then TI, when it's such a long time. So much as well. utility. <laughs> so much utensil. Yeah, they got the fork. They got, they the got knife. so many utensils. Spoon. Yeah, at yeah. their disposal. At their disposal. Dota dissection of a game. Maybe even a little salad fork. They've got that cake, fucking cake Swedish fork. knife thing. Yeah. Yeah. You're the Brits. You should know uh the cutlery. You should know yeah. the posh. Yeah. Yeah. We've got Table some settings. we've got some we've got some in our house, in my family house. Got some cake forks and cake spoons and all of that good stuff. Got a little holder for them. If Secret yeah. are gonna win TI, who do you think will be the MVP player? Like who is the player that win secret ti like their star player because it's not as obvious as, as with other teams um what do you reckon I, I think it will appear to be nisha because the strategies will most often enable him and let him shine and let him carry them through because i think if you look at their wins and when they are so dominant nisha is whatever the strategy is he is always OP and doing crazy work. Yeah, it's interesting. Nisha is definitely an interesting player because when I think of him, I think of this guy as like, if there is a, a reliable strategy the way Secret Play is, Nisha's always the pos one. They don't really do like a Vici yeah. gaming, Ori playing Medusa, or like even a Liquid like Sumail playing Alk or like Storm. He's the real one. Like the, Nisha's always the one. So I feel like when I watch Secret, it's usually. I mean, I don't disagree with what you said because Nisha is one of the best carries in the world, like an absolute sicko at, at the role. But like, I feel like Yapsor and Zai sometimes will just like solo win games for Secret. And the mid one can do anything from the mid lane. He's got probably the widest hero pool of any mid at the event. So, ah, uh, I hate this mid one. He does have craze. a wide. I mean, I that he can't. Does it he is have his thing. Wide hero pool. I swear he has a three hero pool of TA, no, Storm, it's... and Ember. I'm no, sick of this. Gotta... I hate this secret. Love yeah, him. Yeah, you're such a mid Death mid Prophet, hater. Dragon Knight. He plays everything. TA, Ember's his signature. Wait. I mean, he plays Meepo, plays Monkey King a lot, like, plays Marana sometimes. The only th He's played Storm Spirit a bunch at the Birmingham. I mean, I don't know. He just play, does play everything. I wouldn't say he's exceptional at anything. There's, he doesn't really have any signature heroes, but he plays everything. But that's just helpful. Yeah. So it's good for Puppy. It's a good fit for Puppy because Puppy can just draft anything. Yeah, I think. I mean, everyone fits him so well. Yeah. Even when you look at the Team Secret lineups they've had, like they had Kezu on Secret at one point. They had Ace. They had some, no offense, but relatively crappy players, like Tier 2, Tier 3, don't right. compared to a Yaks or a Zai. Now, yeah. So Puppy has kind of struggled to find the the star players that also then fit his versatility role as well. But it, it has now come into place with this iteration. Yeah. Let's uh, move on from Secret as our S tiers. Let's spend a little bit of time on Vici. Obviously, we don't know a ton about this team because they are a Chinese team. So naturally, you're just less familiar with them in the Western Dota scene. How do you think about Vici Gaming? I mean, Marco, you said in the past they're like, I mean, New Meta, Ori Snorri. That's going to be a TI chant for TI10 <laughs> yeah. in London. Ori Snorri. I mean, would you describe them as robotic or would you just describe them as ruthless or Vici Gaming? What do you think? I, I need to do more research, but I'm, because my brain is just swamped by this recency bias of Ori Snorri, Trolls, Medusas, kind of clinical but robotic the playing style of just grinding out wins winning like not losing lanes getting farm getting items going as a team taking objectives winning games it it's always felt whenever i've watched them that there's not lots of flash and there's not lots of crazy exciting stuff going on but maybe i've not seen enough of them yeah what do you think, Adam? Have any strongly held opinions about Vici Gaming? Uh, I mean, they're just you know, paparazzi. For at one time, was he was the the guy, right? Yeah, he was heralded as the next big core player in China. And I feel like he's, you know, he like he he can hold the mantle. I feel like their support play is top notch. Fade and Dy is a great support combo. Yeah. They, uh. And they like will flip flop 
between four and five, or they'll like draft a hero and it could be four or five. I've seen them do that with Venge and stuff. I'm always a fan of a team that will run a vengeful spirit. Um, F- Yang is like, I feel the big. Yeah, he's so good. The big part of this team because Yang always kind of got, at least the last few TIs, kind of had a reputation of being a choker. Right. Or like he would he like have uh, some iffy, iffy plays. Like maybe he was out of his element in some bigger like TI type of event. But this season he's like crushed as an off laner. He's been so strong. So uh, I, I don't know. I would also say Paparazzi, he's the guy who won those solo mid tournaments at DAC twice. Even though he doesn't play mid, yeah. Even though he doesn't play mid. Pretty he's impressive. mechanically, incredibly mechanically incredible player. Um, I'll say about Vici, something that impresses me about them particularly is they have so many strats. They actually have a lot of strats. And the reason we think of them as Ori Snorri is because a lot of the top tier teams don't have an Ori Snorri kind of game in the locker. If you think about a Secret and a VP and an EG, they don't really tend to play like a four protect one that's just not the kind of team they are. But, no. but Vici, they do play that. but And they also play super aggressive. And they also play like all these different lineups. Like, I mean, they won Epicenter coming through the upper bracket. And in the in the final, it went to five games. Game one, it's an IO gyro strat where they have a they have a Monkey King mid creating space, Darkseer like self-sufficient offlaner. Game two, it's a Jug with a Death Prophet and an Earth, an Earth Spirit ro- roaming around. Game three, they run an Ori Snorri Dusa. Game four, they run a Troll Strat with a Lena and a Doom. Game four, they they run a Morphling Strat with Leshrac mid and Mars offlane. They they play every, so many different strats and they're really really good at executing all of them. Um, so that's what I think about Vici. Like they're they're just a versatile team, and they have players that are incredibly good, like at what they do. Um, it is it's. Fade and DY always get mixed up. Fade is the four. Mm, no? Yeah. Fade is the four. Yeah. Is he? According to Look of <laughs> Yeah. So he, Fade has an excellent uh, spirit. You know, Paparazzi is excellent at m- morphling. Ori does like a Monkey King. He does like a Medusa as well. Boo. But yeah, so it'll be interesting to see some of their games. I mean, we I watched them win Stockholm Major. So I have seen a bunch of them and nothing really stands out. And that's, I think, if anything, a testament to how versatile and how many different strats they play. Um, They could really bring anything to the table and they're pretty much better than anyone else at doing it. So, Yeah, they are. Dota buff Buff says Yang is the uh, highest. He's number one China MMR. Oh, really? But uh, looking at the leaderboards as of today... It, he's number two. Who's number so. one now? Uh, somebody on LGD. Oh, okay. They have a Chinese name, so I can't. Oh, is it? So- it'll be maybe then. Maybe always has Chinese characters probably, as his name. Yeah, it's probably maybe. Right. One... It's interesting this uh, China leaderboard because it's got all the European players. I mean, they're all playing. Oh, um... yeah. yeah. A final comment. So I'm on Dota Buff and I'm looking at VG Gaming esports team hero picks filtered by the last six months. The first three cores you come to is all with 17 games, Medusa, Prophet, and Troll. So I'm not going crazy when I say <laughs> they play a lot of Troll and Medusa because yeah. in the last six months, that's their two most common core picks. It's so interesting as well because teams don't play Medusa. Are they the only team I can yeah, think of that the- consistently play yeah. Medusa? But it's like this mentality thing. I feel like I've not. I've probably played like 10 games of Medusa in my life because I can't really... I know it's not the game of Dota I want to play, but it's. Yeah. I think it's a lot. A lot of teams don't want to play that game of Dota as well, genuinely. But then, obviously, yeah. it can be effective and it can win games. Yeah, I think teams aren't good at it as well. They don't give it the time of day to like try and get good at playing a Dusa strat. Do you know what I mean? It's a mix. It's like it's just similar with sports teams. It's like you could talk. Medusa about- doesn't have to win late either. You can roll. Oh, certainly over yeah. and push high ground. No doubt about that. It's much harder in a uh, pro scene thing. But when you have someone at like one of your supports by Invincible Spirit, you can be so greedy as a Medusa. 
Yeah. You don't have to buy like the mobility items right off. You just hard farm and just know you're going to get swapped out. It's such a specialty to Vici though. It, I kind of just throw some some stats out. It's, <laughs> Go the for it. Line, it's so funny. So going to the pub meta, do sir at the lowest levels, 47% win rate. Going all the way up to Divine Immortal, it goes down to 41%. Wow. It, that has to be one of the lowest in pub meta win rates out of any hero. You then go to VG Gaming. Last six months, they've played it 17 times and have got an 82% win rate. They don't lose with this hero. Yeah. And they're clearly yeah. the only people in the planet that understand it and can play with it. Yeah, it's, it's funny because it's like mid lane, like the flashy lane, and then Ori, his signature <laughs> hero, is Medusa. slivers up with this Medusa. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to win nine out. times out of ten. Yeah. Yeah, he throws out his mystic snake. Direct get do, my do, mana. Do, do, do. All right, I'm back to stacking jungle camps. <laughs> do you reckon Ori's the only player in the Dota clan that's level 25 Medusa? <laughs> yeah. Throwing that's out the level chance. 25 Dusa chat lines, yeah. I've never seen one. I haven't. I haven't even seen one close. I don't think I've even seen a gold. I don't think I've ever seen a gold tier Medusa. Yeah. So I, I think the fact that they're the only team at TI that can play this hero helps. <laughs> Let's talk about EG. I mean, you guys are both big EG fans. Bleed blue. Adam, what do you want to see out of EG at, at TI? What do you think are sort of like the keys for them and the the players to watch? And what? How do you feel about EG in general? As well? I mean, they have the they have the talent to win. They just need to. I mean, they're always they always get really far at TI. Yeah. I mean, they're like the kings of third place. Apart from when TI7, where they got wrecked by <laughs> Team Empire plus Reza. Right. Yeah. They had, I mean, they had one, one TI they won, one TI they didn't do too great, and then the rest of it's like thirds. Right. Pretty much. Uh, I just keep, keep trying, keep doing what you're doing. I mean, they've already won once. Hmm. Uh, they they're solid. I mean, they just need to play, I guess. And see what happens. Hmm. Make sure. I mean, Fly is a great a great captain. Bulba is a great coach. They got you know two uh, probably the two most talented NA cores in RTZ and Sumail. Yeah. Uh, they can hard farm RTZ. I mean, he's so strong at doing uh farming patterns and rotations or they can just you know put the game on some males back hmm. and do something like a storm or an alchemist or i mean he can play pretty much anything what's nice about Sumail is it's still like what what do they win ti5 so it's what four years later and he still will win lane matchups that he's not supposed to yeah it's like not that it's like no one's caught up to him um, I mean, he doesn't like. Maybe he doesn't win every every lane, but there's still times where he gets way more than he should, or just shuts someone down. Rest in peace, uh, Shiki, C deck Shiki. <laughs> Marco, what's your thoughts on EG, your boys? I think I'd agree that yeah, the talent is the fly crit S four winning so many majors, Sumail, Ti. When an RTZ, one of the best one rolls out there, and I think it does just come back to the the strategy and the just the the high level strategy and can you out draft and out strategize the captains like Puppy and Fiji Gaming and Solo and Kuro and I think that's always been EG's downfall because the way I, I know they can play a lot of heroes, but at least I always do get the feeling that they're not quite as versatile and I, like yeah. slightly more conventional. You'll see slightly more common groups of picks, like they'll like to run Sven or they'll like to run Lifestealer or they'll like to have a couple certain three rolls like Doom, very common, or Batrider, say. But I feel like the the strategy isn't as expansive, expansive as the other Tier 1 teams and that often mm -hmm. is where they'll get brought back. So, I mean, I think they'll have thought a lot about that and i think they'll kind of know that because I, I think that is one of the reasons why they haven't been clinching championships um but yeah i think the talent's there for sure and i think they're a really fun 
team to watch. Yeah, I, they're a resilient team. I mean, they're always either good for a low bracket run, right? It's like they need that first loss to uh, make them realize what they're missing, and then they go on a big run, and then the third place. <laughs> you yeah. know, you just can't. They're an interesting. It's team. tough. They're an interesting team for me, and I, I would echo what Marco said. I think it'll be, I'll be very interested to see how much Bulber and Fly. I presume they're like a drafting duo now. I know last year Bulba basically drafted. I feel like Fly's been drafting again. I think I got that off the yep. Life of a Genius episode or something. Yeah. So I think I agree in the sense that I thought last year what stopped them, especially beating OG, was the fact that they had built up a tournament repertoire that was quite similar. They loved S4 on Weaver. They basically picked it every game that was available, S4 on Weaver or S4 on Ench. Um and that was sort of like the crux of their strategy. And when those heroes were banned and when, and you know, putting Sumail, things like putting Sumail on a Necro in the elimination game and like putting him on Viper, you know, the Sumail Viper mm. memes. It's like, I wonder to what extent they will learn from that or whether they think, whether they think that's just noise and they, they're confident in what they pick and whatever. It'd be interesting to see like how they approach the strategy. But in terms of a team that executes well, like it doesn't get better than EG. And I personally think that they're in an excellent spot to make a run. They've looked really good recently. The second half of the DPC, they've looked amazing. I mean, culminating in the second place at Birmingham. Another point to mention is that last season when they were at TI, they'd had Fly in S4 for a matter of, what, weeks, a month? Yeah, um, yeah, half long. Max. Very, yeah not so, long. So it was seriously fresh, that team that yeah. formed. And yet they still went to third place. And yeah, often these underdogs and blah 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 stories like these digital chaos get these crazy runs at ti because anything can happen however i mean eg did it as well and but i think now a year later they've stayed the same team for a whole year it, it gives me hope that all right if they can get third last year when they've just formed out of nowhere they've got bulba drafted and it's all new it makes me feel like third is the worst they can do this year or <laughs> my biased hope anyway. It does feel like they're ready for a run. I feel Feels like, like they're ready. Ready for a big game. The thing is with EG is like, can they win that lower bracket final against Secret or Vici or VP? Like, I feel like they can. I genuinely feel like they, they're, they're ready to win a big best of three. Because it feels like they ha I haven't seen them win like a huge best of three. Like, that's why we say they always come third, right? I mean, yeah, I never ready think about for a big best of three. Or, or indeed best of five. Yeah, I think often they can be under under pressure. Like when we, we talk about these bigger series and then we kind of say, oh, they kind of crack and they, they can't draft as, as well over a long term. Also, I feel like EG as a really famous organization always has a lot of pressure. And like, if you think about last TI, there was a lot of hype around them or not, not necessarily hype, but a lot of traction. They've just formed all this drama. Now they've got this super like semi superstar team. S four is on EG fly, kind of a star player. But now this TI, I think they've got much less um, like limelight. And even in the DPC, yeah, they've performed really consistently. They don't have any targets on the back because they weren't quite as good as Secret. But I think again in TI, it kind of plays to your favor to to not have pressure. And I think even just watching Life of Genius episodes, it, I get the sense that they are, they're enjoying themselves a lot and they are very happy in this roster, it feels like, or, and they, they feel very comfortable, no pressure, et cetera. And I think that all does add into successful TI performances. Yeah, I would just, final word also on EG. It's interesting, the two players that they added, Fly and S4, I feel like they're like the the weaker players of the of the lineup. Like looking at this top, these top six that we've been talking about, if we do want to include Liquid, I don't think I do. Gen I think S four and Fly would be my f sixth choice off lane and five out of all of them. I don't know much about Dy, but I mean I'm ready to be proved wrong. But I'd be interested to see how how they play because I feel like Sumail, Artesia, and Crit. I mean, everyone knows that they're some of the best in the world at their position, no doubt about it. But I feel like S4 and Flyer, perhaps in the firing line, if EG do do poor. It, yeah, we'll it's see a comment that. I can get behind. I, but I, my hope is the fact that those two players are proven to be world class. If, yeah, I think S4. Of... Ha yeah, 
I think S4 has his heroes. I, I, I think yeah. S4 has his heroes. Oh, they, like, so, for example, like a Weaver, I mean, he's not in the meta anymore, but something like an offlane Weaver, S4 is like probably the best. Like He did it, did it so well last DPC. Um, but then other heroes, sometimes he just plays like... And like a Batrider, he loves a Batrider. He's very good at that. But some of the... I mean, he just has games where he has a, st- a stinker yeah. of a game. But like, Ma- like I a- can't imagine S4 having like a dominating Mars performance or something, but... I mean, I'm sure he's played a bunch of Mars. We'll see. We'll see. I just don't need... You have Sumail and RTZ and Crit. You don't need everyone to make plays. No. You just need stable. Yeah, it's true. But people give S4 so much credit and admiration. Yeah, it's on, true. On, on yeah. They know, I mean, he's they know like more than me. Super positive. There's. It goes a long way for... like. Outside of strategy, outside of skill, how you mesh as a team personality wise. Definitely. I mean that's why that's why OG won last year. So you just keep it keep the you know, comms light, keep the hope up and you can dazzle. It's so important to have and, like these quieter players like S4. Is that when you've got a team with personalities like Bulba Coach, RTZ one, Sumail two, it's really good to just have like calm, steady, positive like S4. And it's like you said with OG, when you've got a team with Anna and when you sorry, when you've got a team with Seb and Notel on it, you need people like Topson and Anna that are just like dead and don't say anything. And S four S four's similar, like he's just gonna give really sound he's gonna say like the the right thing at the right time and like that's as sim- that's as far as it'll go. Do you know what I mean? I don't know where I heard it, but I thought S four was much more vocal, like in a team setting right okay compared to his public persona okay yeah yeah i think he not necessarily not that he's like shot con or anything maybe it's just that he flames more in a in a pro setting like flame the other team in comms i don't know where i heard that i, I think i've heard that he can be make shot calls and that the impression i get is that he's this really smart player that everyone listens to and is, yeah yeah it's meant to be super smart at the game i, I think it is true and I, th- I think he has dipped in like the last year or two there have been times when he's dipped and always looked like this weak spot but i i think he can come back to this like ti winning level that he obviously once had and og winning majors etc i think he can return there don't google s4 quap <laughs> that's i think that's the the bull joke the bulldog joke like rounding out the top six um vp and lgd i mean we can talk about both of them at the same time really um, VP we mentioned them at the start so we don't need to like fully go over them mentioned that the fact that this might be the first TI in two seasons that they're not the favourite I feel like in TI7 and TI8 they were kind of the big team coming in after the TPC and I feel like they've been a bit quieter coming in and like we said we think that might be good for them um, what things stand out to you about Virtus Pro? in general and like what players are you looking forward to watching at this TI? I look I look forward to watching all of the players, honestly. It, they've got this team is got, it's where the sum of their parts is greater than the individual. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. It feels like when they're playing super well that's the case. And then when they're rubbish when they like choke, it's because they're they go into like solo ranked mode. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes it feels like that. But when they're on their game, yeah, that's like the most one of the most cohesive teams because they just push their heroes to the limit. I feel like yeah. I'd probably single out Roger and Ramses. Honestly, I think Roger as a four, like in these last two seasons, it, I felt like it was him that was pulling the strings with VP in terms of that the tempo that they were playing, the pace was so fast. Like when we yeah. watched them in Katowice and they basically whitewashed the. It was the so easy. Yeah. He teams could not keep up, and it's largely, I think, because of Roger in his four role. And then Ramsey's as a position one, he's I mean, he's top of the MMR nearly all the time, or top yeah. three mechanically insane, but then also plays fun, active heroes as well. It makes him really fun to watch. He's not a position one, like say Nisha, who would always, when when given a decision to make. Nisha will always play it safe. I feel like Ramses will always try and push the hero to the limit in classic VP style, which sometimes means he like gets these random like weird feedy deaths sometimes. Yeah, but it all, sometimes but yeah. he can carry the game 
from it's like the first 10 minutes as a position one like that just doesn't happen with a lot of position ones he can pl- even as like a tb and like hard farmers he'll be like pushing it aggressive like making space almost sometimes like he just does so much um, there's one game i can't remember what tournament it was but it was vp against liquid i to me it just sums up vp and it's everything why they're so incredible they were down like 10 12k gold against liquid it's, can't, it's, it's like mid game kind of timing they smoke up and the dire smoke and just dash in the most aggressive movement across the map into the, the like top left radiant shrine area right. blinking forward all these heroes that they are far behind but they make this play kind of catch liquid out of guard but then this massive team fight kicks off ramses is on terrorblade i believe and he's going crazy with his like mantas and bkbs and ults the rest of his team is doing so much work and control they kind of have no right to be able to make this play and pull it off from being that far behind and yeah. who smokes into this crazy position like it was just crazy play but it worked and pulled off because they are so good and like you say when they are cohesive and they are playing tempo they play tempo and at a pace that no other team matches maybe eg sometimes but yeah. so yeah, there fun are games, to watch there i mean it seems like the standard vp game is like they roll lanes right and just destroy and they just roll the game win all three lanes and it's it's nothing and then there'll be games where they fall behind and you think oh maybe they'll actually lose and then that's where they this like try hard comes out they'd be 10k behind and then they just go aggro and just kill 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 and they get back in the game they they just are so strong at team fights and picks that teams don't know how to play with a lead against them because they're yeah, so I agree. used to being behind against them I definitely agree. So then it's yeah. like, how do you, yeah, how do you beat the, a team like that then? And it's, I guess sometimes at this, they're just their own worst enemy is, yeah, is what it comes down to. Um, it's funny that you've signaled out Roger and Ramsey's, but it goes to show how solid all of them are that you could so easily have just said like no one Pasha and it would be like, yeah, I mean, no one. Oh, Pasha. There's a, there are games where Pasha just wins the game on his own. Yeah, and you know he's going to pick Pango and just win a game by himself at least three times in this tournament. Or they'll pick him <laughs> Shadow Demon yeah. or something weird, and he'll just destroy. And like, oh, okay, I guess three Shadow Demon is a thing. Yeah. And uh, Solo single-handedly makes it seem like Bane should just be removed from the game. <laughs> yeah. Like, walking around with no no items, nothing whatsoever, and you're like, oh, Defensive Nightmare is actually just better than shallow grave <laughs> that's it's kind of crazy how good he can make a hero look and that's i'm just saying we and that's not even saying mentioning no one at all yes yeah. and solo i feel like he's res- i think in the pro scene he's respected as one of the best warders in the game i feel like i watched a true site um this is quite a long time ago actually kiev major that's quite a while ago but i watched a true site in the true site for kiev major OG who are in the final against them have this book flip book of like all these solo wards and there was that scandal where didn't someone release like all the solo warding spots about six months ago and there was like some mini scandal like this guy is so good at warding it's insane so he likes to hide him all over the shop yeah they just don't get dewarded yeah they'll do like smoke ward stuff and yeah he loves a smoke very, ward mission at like four minutes at night time very strong you know, warding for where you're going to be in like six minutes. Yeah. Not like for the next objective. Yeah, not he, necessarily. he understands his team and what they want to do so well. Another and a cool thing, looking just my last VP comment, looking at the Liquipedia histories. So Ramsey's Pasha, no one and solo have all been on VP for three years now, all joined the same time, oh, wow. August 2016. So yeah, that's what I was going to mention. Yeah. They're, they've been together for three years. It's crazy. Other it's than cool. Roger. Other than Roger, yeah. yeah. It, it makes me and I think people attached to that team because of that longevity. You really get behind all of the players and and the organization itself. Like, like when we've been to LAN events, there's a massive VP um, following fan base in from the Russians and the CIS region. 
and yeah it's just super cool that they have been together that long yeah interesting segue for us i feel like the lgd are vp kryptonite um and i say that because when i think of lgd i think of them as the ultimate punish team they are the best team. I mean, we know we talked that they haven't had a very impressive DPC season, but if you give them the benefit of the doubt and say an LGD team on top of their game, they strike me as the team that's like the ultimate punish. If you make any mistakes against LGD, they'll just punish you harder than pretty much anyone else. They're, they feel like a more reactive team than other teams, um, just based off when I've watched them and the last TI and stuff. And I feel like Maybe I'm biased because of the series, uh, the series they played at last TI. But LGD seems like VP Crypt Knight, and also X Nova is another hero that makes Bane look like he should be removed from the game. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the X Nova yeah. main. But LGD is a weird one. It's kind of hard to make a comment on them, honestly. I don't know what's changed since last TI. I just think Chinese supports are the best. <laughs> And it's like this their support combo is just as good as DY Fade. FY X Nova. It might even be better. Yeah. FY God is still one of the best uh fours, best supports in all of Dota, has been for probably four or five years now. Can play anything from a four. He actually plays at anything. He even played a new meta podcast, a seal of approval quap four. So yeah. You know it's getting wild when a Quop 4 is flying about in a pro game. He plays techies. He plays... Obviously, he's the Tusk kin, king, self-proclaimed. I mean, Enigma. Ru- yeah, Rubik. get a Rubik on him as well. Rubik, Rubik of course. Rubik, Rubik and Earthshaker. Players. Earthshaker, that yeah. was his TI8 one. It is weird that they not performed that well over the season. I wonder if the roster issues... Because they only lost... Maybe or are they lost they didn't play or... for some of the that's true, that's season. True. I wonder how much that affected it. Who was it they lost? Maybe took a break for a while, I yeah, thought. That's right. They got XM instead. So Arme's always been the this season. Yeah. Okay. So maybe wonder... one of those. You look into Arme's eyes and you can just tell that Dota is everything. That's the only thing that he sees in his eyes. I see creep when I look in his eyes. <laughs> He's only like eighteen or something, like nineteen, eighteen. They're an interesting team. There's not much to say because we don't know much. They haven't played that well, but we can only imagine they'll be ready to go and they'll have the ages in there. I mean, they were second last year. They're all supremely talented. They, I don't know what else more is to say. I think that's they're like Chalice. I feel like he's kind of like S4. Yeah. Well, he's probably better than S4, but they did the same type of deal where the three would just sit in the same lane for a really long time. Yeah. Chalice Enchantress was like so good, so strong last TI. Yeah, they definitely sit like like EG. They sit their off laner in in the lane for a long time, more than other teams. Let's talk about the best of the rest, and I'm looking at the the six remaining. Um, DPC Pro Circuit teams that those being Fnatic, NIP, TNC, OG, Alliance, and Keen Gaming. First of all, uh, Marco, which of these six teams strikes you as the most exciting team? Like, which team could you see going furthest out of these six? Who I think will go furthest, or just a, or, or in, I mean, take it whichever way you want. It's which hard. team would you be? Well, yeah, which team do you think will go furthest, and which team are you most excited to watch? Who will go furthest? I am. Um, I think they're all very similar. I'm a, I, okay. Let's say Keen won't go far. I think Alliance, OG, TNC, Nip, Fnatic could all equally go as far as each other. <laughs> That's a hot take. <laughs> so I really don't have much to say on that. I think they are all kind of, kind of equal. I think the ones who've got a bit more points in the season, like Nip, Fnatic, I think they could absolutely get knocked over by a TNC or a, an Alliance. Yeah. Who I'd say most excited for, I, def- I, I am excited for Alliance. Yeah, I, The organization, obviously a massive fan of, but even just watching them a bit more over the last couple of months, this young new team that's finally clicking, I like some of the players 
would be keen to root for them. Um, I don't actually like any of these other tier two teams that much in terms of players that jump out at me. What is it that you like about Alliance? Is it just the org or like do the players, do you like watching them play or? I think I, I've enjoyed watching them play when I have and they seem young and dynamic. Like they, they seem to play quite fun Dota. Um, They're definitely an interesting team, yeah. I mean, that Mike is kind of like, he reminds me of Anna a bit in terms of the way he plays, yeah, like yeah. quite nervous, but clearly incredibly talented, but like a bit of nerves, a bit of indecision in his play, but sometimes when he's like feeling it on his heroes, he seems like incredible, like like he's playing smurfing in a pub sometimes. I've always... Just... Have, what I was oh, going to say, they have this quick for mid who sometimes looks like Seb when he tried to play mid for like a few months and sometimes yeah. looks like sometimes looks like a booster just like plays a, yeah. a lone druid or or a brood mother he has these cheesy heroes i honestly don't know why but literally for about 5 years i've been a fan of Koifer. and i've always cuz he's been around for he's five been around years. for a long time and i've always just kind of kind of liked watching him and he he plays fun heroes it seems so i don't know if you know where it came I, from I don't know. I don't know if he plays fun heroes. I feel like he doesn't play the the classic mids. I mean, that's, Quick that's has hard, played actually. almost every position yeah. since he's, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Mm. I think insane is really. Has he not? Didn't didn't he come up as like a three? Didn't Koifa come up as a three? And he's like the nature's prophet lone druid. Like, ooh, look, I'm baby bulldog. And now, uh, and then he would play mid. He might have played carry on. Oh gosh, what even was that? That team like three years ago, they didn't even make it the TI. Bulba was on it. I don't remember. I can't, I can't help you there. Yeah. Former time. Uh, well, it could have been Mouse Sports, right? Because they keep picking up rosters. Yeah, it was it was Mouse Sports. Right. Yeah, I mean Alliance are an interesting team. Um, Boxy plays some team, fun here. It was Team Tinker. Sorry, team that was their Tinker. name. Remember Team Tinker. Yeah, I just got onto them. He's played two for a lot of years when I've looking at all these random teams. Yeah. I don't know, I've got this. Sometimes but it feels like I was saying, like Quake is a weird sort of mid playing weird heroes. Boxy's play some out of the box heroes. Tiger is kind of like a classic four. Insania's kinda of like a classic five. He has his favourites. He's he's stuck by the Abaddon position five, I think, a lot longer than others and stuff like that. And I feel like sometimes Alliance struggle to make all of those pieces fit together. Quite a lot of uniqueness in each individual player rather than cohesiveness. But when they can make it all fix, fit together, and I feel like TI is the best time to do that because they're going to be playing so many scrims and everything's built up towards this. So if there's ever a time that you're going to get your play, you know, slick, as it were, as a team, it'll be for TI. So who knows where they could go. Yeah, I, I think just generally they play good brawling Dota, which is what I like to see. I like that. So, so, what's the original question out of these next six? Who do I, I don't know if Alliance would go the farthest, but I think they have the potential to go the farthest. I think they have the highest ceiling. I also think they have the lowest floor <laughs> out of, if that makes yeah, any no, sense. I, yeah, I can yeah. see that. They could like come in and just roll over. Uh, or they could come in and be, you know, upper bracket. I guess, yeah, does every, not everyone comes in upper bracket, right? Out of the group stage? Top four from each group is upper bracket. Yeah, I, I could see them top four in a group. Wow, that would be big. Yeah. What do you what do you reckon then, Adam? And for you, what's your... What other teams I mean, the team, would you like to pick out? The or? team I want to go the farthest out of the next six is Ninjas in Pajamas, because I love... PPD. Yeah. Uh, and I do think he's a drafter on par with Puppy. Now, is that, do they necessarily have as wide of a hero pool um, as Secret? I don't think so. And I think there are question marks around mid play with uh, Fada. Yeah. But 33 is very strong. And Saska is uh, number three MMR in China, right? So man, Saska's Saska's a pub stomper, man. So yeah, weird. It's crazy. It's weird yeah, how good he is. Yeah, he's I mean I I think 
they can surprise people. Um, I don't know what else, much else to say. I think one of the two C teams will make a run, but it's very or one of the I guess three because Mineski also made it. But it's very hard to guess Whoa. which C team. We'll make it right. Well, that's you've set me up nicely because I actually have got a lot of confidence in TNC. I think in TNC over Fnatic. Yes, I think TNC. Honestly, I'd put them on par of like eh. TNC to me are the clear primary team out of the best of the rest. For me, I feel like Heen as a coach, like the longer he's there, he's just making them so good. Um, let me get DPC up. I think they've had some recent strong tournaments, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, so fourth place at Epicenter, that's pretty strong. Um, that's the only result they've had really since the first major of the season at KL. Um, I believe in this TNC squad. I think, yeah, like Gabby, sure. Didn't they just didn't they just get Gabby or? Re- oh no, I'm getting mixed up with Fnatic. So Armel is like some super young, sicko mid player who plays these kind of hard farming position two um cuckoo is like actually so good at position three he plays bat rock yeah but is he gonna make it to the turn he's in china i saw a, i saw like a t- <laughs> i saw a tweet where he's like in china so that's confirmed i think okay so he's there is he gonna get yeah. mega boot is he gonna get like every time he gets a kill is the chinese fans gonna like go crazy i don't know i, don't know. But I agree i think cuckoo's very strong yeah he plays bat rider like probably the best bat in the world suddenly out of nowhere Tim's Tim's was the MVP of my fantasy team. Like I would just slot Tim's in, and he just gets so many points. (laughs) Yeah, all the time for going like two years back. Man, Tim's is great as well. He plays like Enigma four and just like crazy big ultimate position fours. Um, so I I have a lot of belief in TNC to be the team that goes the furthest. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't know. It's like with Fnatic, they have Ice Ice Ice, right? Like he's yeah. God Gamer. They have Abed, who you feel like and, and, every year yeah. he's less. You know, he's more like the pub stomp 10k Abed, and you know, less like the sort of choke Abed. The, as yeah. he gets and older. then DJ is one of the best fours, maybe in all of Dota. So, yeah. But that feels like they just kind of choke. Yeah, I, I think that they. I feel like the talent is much stronger than the results. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Also, Liquidpedia is telling me that Jabs is playing carry. Yeah, that's what I've just seen. Yeah. Is that happening? The I'm swear Jabs has never played carry in his career. His signature heroes, it says, are Spirit IO and Nyx. He plays a wicked Winter Wyvern as well. Yeah. I mean, if he's playing position one, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Dubu is definitely not playing position one, neither is DJ, so. Yeah. It'd be interesting. Jabs is a really, really good player. He's honestly what I always used to think he was secretly the best player on the team, um, but not as a position one. I mean, I've never seen that. It so says June twenty eighth this year that MP was removed and Jabs goes one. Dubu steps out of coach into the roster, and now they've got March as a coach, July seventeenth. So very recent changes. I yeah. think MP was the weakest link and was a choker. He only played Jug. He had one he hero. He played Jug, yeah. Um, Jabs, like you say, these Winter Wyvern insane. I have no idea. Wyvern won. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Actually, what's happening now, Wyvern won. Marco has a new favorite team. Is that what's... <laughs> I can get behind this. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, they always underperform. I... Do we mention Heen as the coach for TNC? I said that, That's... yeah. Like, the longer yeah, he's did there, say that, the yeah. more... That's like a big... It's huge, yeah. This guy yeah. won TI for Team Liquid and they had like the sickest strats when they won. So I don't know. TNC, I'm just putting my my flag in the ground. This is my hit. This is my dark horse team. Yes, that's your dark horse. Just a, uh, or well, do we want to mention OG? I'm going to mention OG. I mean, they can, sec. yeah, they can. Okay. <laughs> but like they, that's your team. I guess you would probably pick. Yeah. It's a team that I would be, I'll be cheering for. Um, I'll come back to, I was going to say something about NIP. I'll say that in a sec, but let's go, let's talk about OG. I feel like it's similar to, to LGD, like it's hard to say. It's hard to I mean, say. They didn't play with Anna for most of the year. Yeah, but then so. the, the last year, Anna just Anna lives the dream Dota two professional life where he doesn't even play for for like eight months. He just comes back for TI. That's this is the second year in a row where he's just come back for TI basically. 
Um, yeah, but then I mean, he's been he's been playing clubs for the first time. Yes, in a, for in a long like time. He normally would just play party queue, right? But this year he's been playing the the solo MMR, and he's been looking really strong. Yeah, I mean, he was a classic. But he, I guess he he didn't need to do that though. He's always super strong and uh, competitive. Yeah. I think Anna is one of those where if OG do well, it's when they it's when Anna is in like unleashed mode, rather than like oh this game's so hard like mode. And I feel like No Tail and Seb definitely view Anna as like the the player to support in both a literal sense in the game and also like in the team setting because Topson's just just dead and he's going to just like do his own thing and just like be a sicko and Jarex is the same and like the the team sort of hinges around Anna at least that's when I watch them play Anna's always the yeah, one that sure. like wins the game for them or is the one that sort of starts the downfall or like spirals. I mean that's how it is in true side right they have to like talk him up yeah yeah keep, you know keep his uh keep his head on straight keep his head level yeah um yeah I mean, it'll be interesting to see. I think Topson's going to have some weird ass heroes that aren't the same weird ass heroes as there were last year. Um, so I'll be, I'll be interested to see what he's got. He'll definitely play. They'll definitely play some weird stuff in the group stage, like some Shadow Demon mid or some bizarre stuff will be happening. And then, and Seb will play some weird position fours that are at position three, like Wyvern and Tree. Um, and he'll be bottom net worth and they'll still win somehow. So they're an interesting team to watch. I know. Uh, Marco and Adam aren't big fans, but I really like watching them. So I'll be, I'll definitely try and watch their games because they're they're pretty weird. But we'll I mean, see. they're all they're all good players. They're all good players. It's yeah. more of those things you got it. You got to have some people to cheer against. Oh, for sure, I've got plenty. Yeah, that's <laughs> what makes it good. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna say they're they're bad <laughs> because they're not. It's just yeah. you know I got to cheer for. Oh yeah, I've definitely. EG. One... I got to cheer for Crit and his shoulder. Mate, I've got to cheer against Crit. If there's one player I'm cheering against, oh, it's Crit. Oh boy. <laughs> that, word on NIP, what I was going to say is to me, they. I love PPD as well, so I actually I'd love NIP to do well. But they seem to me like a budget secret. <laughs> I don't know if it's. Yeah, they are budget yeah. I don't know if it's because they That got, is 100% what they are. It's because they've got Fatter and Ace. So it just make Immediately in my mind, it's like Saska is a budget Yaps or 33. Yeah, he's a sicko. Maybe he's the one that doesn't. Isn't as much tainted. But like Fatter and Ace are like a, 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 just a cheap niche mid one. So. I mean, you look at their. You know, hover over, right? Six different flags for the five positions in coach. Yeah. The same for Nip. It's just like. European collective with <laughs> yeah. uh yeah. I yeah, I agree that they are like budget secret and even though Saska is a monster in pubs, I don't yeah. think he's a world yeah, I don't think he's a world class four in the pro scene. He plays five as a four. It's really weird. He plays like he often plays position fives as the four. Like he plays Shadow Demon four, Shadow Shaman four, which is more reasonable. Um he doesn't have a wide hero pool in Do like Phoenix of, and or Yeah, he loves a Phoenix. But yeah, I agree with Marco. He's like more of a pub stomp, somehow an insane pub Yeah, stomp I don't player. know how he stomps these pubs, but he has it's t- evident that he does. He has two accounts in top 10 Europe. So weird. So sick. But, but yeah, I think the rest of the team, even PPD, even Ace Fatter, even 33, are all just not good enough on enough heroes. I think what's going to carry them is 33 playing Lycan or Furion, or Ace playing a Syllaba Rat. I think those... Of the three I mean, heroes just, that will get them wins and take them to eighth place. They're not going to blow anybody away with individual performances, but it's where the PPD strategy and drafting comes in. And strategy and drafting can get you a long a combo way, thing. especially mm-hmm. if you can figure out a meta that's so insular as like the TI meta. If you can yeah. get on in on that and figure it out early. I think there's too much riding on PPD <laughs> to come. Well, I think it's a, it's a tough ask. Thirty three is a player that can that can style as well. Like he's the star player. He can on a few, but then it's like to me they would need an X factor like OG, but they have Ace instead of Anna, and I think yeah, it's the, the team just may not fat, good enough. And Fatter instead of Thompson as well. It's like it hinges on Fada. 
Will he? That's not. A, that's not someone you want it to hinge on. To be fair, no. It's just yeah. that he can't get stomped. If he gets stomped, I mean, he's going to get stomped. He's, it's just years. He's like, it feels the same. The, the, the thing is player. with Fatu when I watch NIP, it's like. It feels like they're in damage limitation mode in the draft. Like they give him like a DK because they're like, yeah. like, just try not to get red. He just likes str- he likes strong, stable heroes. I mean, he, he used to be the meme that what it didn't matter what hero you gave Fada, he would just build mech, like you know, Viper, DK, OD, like yeah. Uh, I mean, we'll see. There are times where he plays absolutely sick, and there's some times where he just. It just chokes, yeah. I guess. So we'll see. it's very important that your two doesn't choke. It is cool that the Chinese nickname for Peter is Captain America. Did you see that thread? <laughs> yeah, I saw that. No, I did not see that. Oh, uh, the Chinese well, nicknames. Yeah, Chinese nicknames because TI5 is Captain America. That's pretty sweet. Um, the one team from the rest that we haven't talked about is, Yikes. is keen gaming. I mean, I don't really know what to say about this team. They've got a mid player who doesn't have an alias. What's his? What even is his alias? It's 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 Yi, isn't it? When I've yeah. seen them play, they're like Yi, Yi, e. e or whatever. Yeah. E. yeah, it's pronounced E. Right. Okay. And they've got Old Chicken as a position one, who's been around the block, um, it, it, certainly on different teams. Kaka is an excellent four, and eleven is an excellent three. Eleven is like actually a legitimate three, like really, really good. Neck, Mister Neck. Yeah. Um, I don't know much about Dark. He's just sort of one of those position Chinese position fives that sort of bounces between teams and is always there. But eleven and Kaka are the standout players, and I don't really know what to read into Old Chicken and this E guy. Old Chicken to me is like MP, the guy that got kicked from Fnatic. Plays a bunch of jug, and that's all I really know about him, to be honest. There's not Kaka was say. really high in the Chinese MMR. He was like the first guy to be top of the leaderboard as support only. That's Kaka, and, right? Yeah, and he's a he's a very vocal, like shot calling from position four. He's like the captain, basically. Um, and yeah. Eleven's their most gifted player in terms of skill at the game. Um, yeah, I think yeah, it rides on eleven and Kaka, and I think that they might be let down by the the weaker of the players. Probably, I just I don't know anything about them. So, <laughs> I mean, I know sure I hear I've heard the names. Yeah. Uh, oh, it, on um Kaka's trivia, it said he was the first ever player in China to reach nine k MMR, and this was playing, I believe, only support. So that's a very, that's very impressive, impressive yeah. achievement. Yeah. Well, let's move on to, we talked about how... The rest of the rest. Which of the teams, we'll do it a similar way, like... Which is the teams the shittest one out of all these? <laughs> which team stands out to you, basically, out of the, out of the qualifying teams? Um, so, the M- MUFC award for a team oh, that God. might not win a game. This is before Stan's time. Was that time. TI2? Was, that was or TI3. Was it 3? That was Winter's team was MUFC and they went 0 and 18 or oh something. Yeah. Uh I would I would think Infamous is the Yeah, you you've got to think Infamous are going to be the worst. Bottom two. Yeah. I do think that I do genuinely believe that Chaos will just get found out. I mean, they've got Milan and Keizu and Faded, like come on. They're not. I've never I who know. is this Faded? He's just like some just like I mean, he's been around. I've seen him but like Malaysia. I've seen him play 21. like battle cut videos on YouTube. Okay, I guess that was the opposite of what you wanted the answer. Oh no, we can, okay, we can te- chop it up any way we want. I would say teams teams that I think have a chance out of these three, or out of these six, mm. or is it five? No, it's six. Uh, would be newbie NA, yeah. chaos and RNG. I would. I don't believe in chaos, but I do believe in R- RNG and newbie. To me, are the two for sure. I, I think newbie. We we saw what happened with VGJ Storm last time. They won the group. I mean, yeah, they didn't do well after that. They sort of ran, they got unlucky and they had that coach drama and then oh yeah, and they 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 got unlucky because they ran into OG 
straight away yeah. and everyone thought OG were going to be bad and then it turned out they yeah. were like some wild card. But this team, I mean, the team's the same other than they've got CCNC, but you are snaking an MSS, MSS. That's the same as the, that's the same, very similar core as the VGJ Storm. So and I then believe And then I, I God 5, God Tier legit, 5 right there. Legit 5, yeah. And CCNC is a yeah. very good, is a very good mid player. There's no doubt about it. And a good coach in Aoi 2000. Yeah. TI winner Aoi 2000, who is number 23 on the Chinese MMR leaderboard. Really? How about that? Yeah. Is that CCNC playing on his account? Yeah. Because <laughs> Su- Sumail plays on Bulba's account. So I'm always skeptical now when I see coaches. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it, it probably CCNC, is. CCNC. Uh, it probably is, Aoi. CCNC's top five, or he's third right now in A. Right. I guess he hasn't NA played low? enough. <laughs> Enough public Chinese Games, matches, yeah. maybe. It's. But. I I wonder just a quick quick uh, tangent because you know the the meta in China is random draft. They don't play all pick, so I wonder if I wonder if all the pros are having to play RD when they play pubs in China. Or <laughs> that'd be funny. That'd be. Awesome. It's really weird that in in China like there's no all pick scene really. Everyone just queues RD. It's kind of weird. I don't know how that happened. I read a thread once about how that happens, but anyway. But yeah, Marco, what do you reckon about these teams? So I would agree with Newbie being the one to watch, and I think they are the the reverse to Fnatic. I think they are all not amazing players, but come together and overperform how talented they all are. Right. Yeah. No disrespect, but the looking at the list, you are CCNC, Snay, Snaking. I to me, I just think of I think Dignitas from TI one or two that Snaking was on and. It, it feels like some trashy kind of player, but it's somehow doing work. MSS, I know he gets, I think he might have coached or has got some respect in the past, but I've always just seen him as a kind of crappy player. Pile I die. No, he's a solid four. Solid four? I don't know. I don't know why Snake I've got this King, negative bias against. Snake King was like great on Wraith King last year at TI. It's about all he did. Yeah. Yeah. Offlane Wraith King Willow, yeah. MSS Snake King. Yeah. But I do think that, yeah, they come together and they are, they kind of overperform the talent and I think they could go a decent way, like kind of eighth. Like, I mean, CC like and C got top eight. Yeah, he got, they, you know, on Nip, they got eighth. Or, uh, sorry, o, o, uh, Optic. Yeah, yeah Optic. It, it last, Optic and VGJ both got seven to eight. And yeah, like I you think... say with the VGJ, they had an unfortunate run. They got knocked down by OG and then faced Secret in the lower bracket. Bit rough. I think they could repeat that kind of seven to eight kind of showing if they, because their form is pretty strong. Hmm. I do think that you are as a player is better fit for pos one than pos two because he would kind of, he was a really good player in the game post laning, but he felt like you just got found out by these like sicko mid laners that just don't make mistakes in the lane, like a maybe or a no one or a Sumail. So I really, I really like you are as a safe lane carry actually. Is there, why isn't it a, bit, a bigger deal made over like two brothers being in TI together? It's definitely cool. Yeah. yeah, that is cool. But yeah, they want to watch. And then I feel bad on Math to be on Chaos because I do think that if you've got Milan and this Faded and Kezu, that you're going to struggle to perform against these tier two and above teams. Mm, so I'm not too sure about them. I don't know much about Royal Never Give Up, but I hear that the Chinese qualifier was insane. So if they've won that, then looking at the team actually, Lanem, Arfu, Mone. They crushed they crushed the qualifier, I thought. I think they I mean, could be not a dark as hard horse. as Newbie didn't Newbie in a did not lose a game in the entire qualifier. So wow. as bad as NA is, yeah. they still had to beat forward and j storm yeah i mean the so. the seat the china qualifier is like e home faith beyond ferrari stack Zhao Wei, Asta stack xxx baboka and q they came they beat sire uh, team cyrus with silar and injuli the newbie stack with sccc the serenity stack there was like the new the new wing stack whatever uh c deck who got to they played in the final they had xm and and like that uh eve guy and then invictus gaming so that is a stacked qualifier. Yeah, right there, it so. is a stacked qualifier. So I think they could be a dark horse. 
I mean, there's always a Chinese qualifier team that just six it like C Deck yeah. did. They just yeah. show up yeah. and like, hey, we're the cool new Chinese team now. Yeah. By the way. There's no doubt about that, yeah. I mean, do we have anything to say about Navi, uh, Infamous, and Mineski? Navi? <laughs> uh, if I had to pick bottom two yeah. out of... Everyone. I would be, I'd say Infamous and Navi, but that's just me being a Navi hater. Oh, that's harsh. I don't know about Mineski. I feel like they've got... Yeah, I don't, new, know, I don't know who this Nico... Who's Nico Baby? I don't know who this person... Um, Bulgarian. Yeah. I don't know about this Mineski lineup. KP and Ninja Boogie are the only teams that are the only two players that I'm like, Moon. yeah, they're okay. I mean, I, yeah, Moon Moon was obviously a player that's been around for a while. But... He would give me solid fantasy points. Yeah. Yeah, I think Mineski. I mean, somebody's. I mean, somebody's got to be bottom two. That's just my guess. Infamous and. Even giving them the benefit of the doubt for Infamous and being like, oh, they're a wild team, like no one knows like what they're going to do. Still, like at the end of the day, it's like, how far the, can this Peru stack go? I mean, surely not too far. Yeah. I'd um, say Infamous, Mineski, bottom two, then Na'Vi, Chaos to follow up to make the bottom four. Let's uh, round this up a bit. In general, just TI as a whole, not really uh, thinking about teams necessarily, but just looking forward to TI as the event. Is there anything, Adam, that you're particularly looking forward to or things you particularly want to see? Like, What, what would be your, your best wishes other than EG lifting the ages? <laughs> well, I guess first place is going to get over 15 million. So that's a first, right? Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, I don't remember what first place was last time. I think it was maybe 12, 12 split five ways. So now it's 15, 3 million each. Uh, things I want to see or things, what was the, sorry, I just thought I wanted to mention that the prize pool is yeah, ridiculous. Just things you, you're most looking forward to or things you want to see like outside of a team perspective, like maybe about the games or about um, whether you want to see certain matchups or certain storylines or anything. I don't know. Uh classic rivalries <laughs> i feel like eg has a rivalry with everyone but eg og eg secret e eg vp is a is a eg vp those well. are like or lgd vp um liquid chaos i just want good dota that's all uh, liquid chaos would be super sick yeah that actually i, I do want to see that i would love for chaos to knock out liquid can you imagine that oh my god yeah i mean it's the same as what eg versus og last year here's a question if if chaos play liquid is are the liquid players hugging matumba or are they doing like a stone cold handshake like no tell fly style crow would hug 100 percent. would hug i think Kuro would 100 percent. and then the matter is but does he do want to be last? Because if he leads with a hug, I think the rest of Liquid like me, 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 are just gonna copy Kuro. Does Matumba wanna get wanna? Does Matumba wanna? Yeah, show does he wanna hug? I they, mean, he got kicked. It's insane, like how much he'll, potential. He'll hug Kuro. Can't not. Hug what Kuro. if Kuro was the one that kicked him? Yeah. Why would? Ah, uh, Kuro's so zen that he would hug him. Yeah, but Fly is really zen. I mean, I you just know. remember Fly No Tail last year that death stare. Oh God, uh, No Tail. I mean, that one was probably a, a harsher breakup than the Liquid one. It was harsher, to be fair. Well, not necessarily harsher, but like more drama. I don't know. They want a TI together. Maybe they haven't been friends across multiple, you know, for yeah. 10 years across multiple organizations and games, but still. Anything you want to, anything you're looking forward to, particularly, Marco, or how, how do you see in general to preview the TI? One thought I've had is I feel like there's there's more team stability in the teams we're seeing at this TI. I don't know how true that statement is, but I feel like there's a lot of teams going into TI now, particularly the better performing ones that have had relatively good longevity to the squads. Maybe I'm super biased by EG being together for a year rather than oh, so a month, but I, I feel like there's been less 
team roster drama Definitely. issues and things like that. DPC, just, that's the effect of the DPC. Teams are yeah. incentivized to stay together. And I like that because now the te- you feel... You get more storyline, like, don't you? More storyline. You know the team's better. There's history. There are then allows for some storylines like the Matu stuff because of very small changes here and there. Um, but yeah, I just kind of like that you, you're more familiar with each team and you're not going, God, who's just joined this team or who's been playing on this team this year? I, I like that. So I mean, yeah, I, just, I don't know how... It's like all the chance of winning, I feel like, is consolidated amongst the top six teams. And I know it's kind of lame to be like, yeah, six teams is a third of the field, right? A third of the 18 teams. <laughs> yeah. But I really, there's such a drop-off in consistency and like quality. And I find it really hard to for an OG-type team to just spike the tournament and come out and win it this year. TNC Predator, man, I'm telling you. Yeah. I mean, I, it would be really cool if there was a storyline that I could get behind uh, a nice dark horse, but secret has looked so strong so yeah you feel like if someone it, there's too many like super strong teams this year the fact that there's six of them it's like even if tnc predator like spike the tournament are they really gonna topple say four of these six teams yeah even i think though, it even would be safe to say not even six out of 18 just take the top three teams like yeah secret virtus pro and vici Who's going to beat them? They're also, going to beat each other. You think about OG, they beat EG in terms of top tier teams. They beat EG and they beat LGD. They're the two teams they beat. Feels like you're going to have to go through more this year unless there's some crazy group stage shenanigans. Um, but who knows, man? Who knows? I'm just hoping... Two things I'm hoping for, particularly. I'm hoping... And I don't think this will happen, but it's in my mind. I'm hoping there's not some crazy undiscovered meta that's like bad you know like some ti4 just there's just a poor meta that develops i don't think that will happen i think the teams are better at working out there's dota's been around for longer and captains are better at like meta gaming the meta than in the past if you understand what i mean by that yeah i think the get the meta and the game itself is in a really good spot also yeah i agree I agree, definitely. It seems like it's very there's a good balance between like brawling and turtling and all of this stuff. And the other side of that coin is um uh oh, what was I gonna say? Good matter. Oh yeah, the other side of the coin was um I'm just super looking forward to seeing like the first day of games, just because I really want to know what heroes are gonna be teams are gonna like start the tournament off. I wanna yeah, it'll have take that like day six one. The first, because, uh, you know, they come in, like, flights or whatever. Yes, yes. Like, maybe eight teams play in one group of games and then eight more in the second group. Almost after that first group of mm. four matches, it's like, all right, that's the meta. Here we go. Well, that's, like, the start of it, yeah. It's yeah. just, I'm just looking forward to the first game that I watch. Because the they first play draft. Me. They're going to yeah. pick a tier, like, they're going to pick, say, I don't know, they're going to pick, like, Jug or PA or Lundra, and I'm gonna be like, man, is that like some sick meta pick, or is that just like a speciality comfort, for this game? Yeah. Like, you don't know, and it's like that. they play, um, they've played these scrims, right? We have no idea, and they yes. have, I just feel like, already on the meta, just this is standard now, and we're like, whoa, oh my god, Skywrath <laughs> Mage, what's you know, what's happening? Yeah, it's definitely, yeah. Uh... I wonder who will cast the grand final i it's it's so interesting because in ti8 i was so behind od like i was like this is od's year him and, and fog they, they super i don't think well see first of all have we said this so many times having malini on was a mistake so that kind of i did feel like that tainted it a little bit like od and fog were like had to fit him in which is just not something you want on the final stage you want it to just be like pure just two people at the top of their game but I feel like this year, I feel like Toby is just the hype for TI. It's just, you can't beat it. I feel like even like, if there was a random game, I don't know, say upper bracket semi final, like lower bracket round two, I'd want OD to pass it. He's my favorite caster for that game. But I feel like grand finals is like, 
I think it just Toby. Toby just yeah. yeah. I think he. Classic. I think he performs better in the in the on the bigger stage and that his. Yeah. I mean, his theater and his drama. I think his average isn't as good as OD, but then yeah, in a I grand agree. final of TI, I think he he just pulls every notch out and is so good. But then again, we've not seen OD cast the duo in the grand final. True. But will they risk it? Not. I mean, it was kind of a risk what they did last year with that three-man cast. OD has been casting a lot more than... Actually, to be honest, Toby, in the second half of the year, has been casting quite a lot of events. Mm. So it could be Toby, Kyle. Kyle's an interesting one. I feel or like... Or Toby Sins. I, like I wonder what Cinder is doing. To- I'd love Toby Sins. I feel like Toby well, Kyle might be, might be like an overload Sin in the grand hasn't final. casted most of the year, though. Yeah, but yeah, he never probably casts most be. of the year. And then he just turns up for TI. Yeah. But Toby, Toby Kyle have done a lot together, so... They yeah, they have done a lot. Do, do it together. Sind is, Sind is like my favourite caster, though, analyst. His, an, his analyst, is, his analysing is so good and he's so smart and just like his little jokes and stuff. I love Sind's casting. So no really love good. for Blitz Capitalist. <laughs> uh, I like him. I, I'd certainly have more love for them than like... Well, you know who's actually going to cast? Lyrical Trent. Oh my god! It's gonna be lyrical trend. Fine. He's not that bad. He's not that bad. I, I genuinely. He's not, that... he's not that bad. We we overdo how bad he is. I genuinely. I really like. I was trend. re-listening. I was re-listening to vods of TIA and and lyrical lyrical's casting. His voice is annoying a little bit, but like what he says is like top yeah. notch. He yeah. just has a bit of a whiny voice. Like, oh my god, like a bit of a whiny yeah. voice. Other That's than a good, that, yeah. Sir, if we're ever going to make this podcast big, we're going to have to interact with these people. We can't be hating on <laughs> all these <laughs> players <laughs> and commenters. No, I don't hate I think I think he's an... I really like his casting. You no, know, Marco, not... negative Nancy, calling these players shit. It's like, <laughs> watch out, sir. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Watch out, sir. I have the... Utmost respect for every player attending to him. <laughs> the casting one is very interesting. Also, I wonder because it's in China, what the like the English setup. I mean, it's not the primary setup, right? So yeah, it'd be interesting to see how that one. Yeah, plays it's out. funny because they always would go to, to the. Um, if you watch like tournaments, you see like the Chinese or the CIS setup, and it's this rinky dink thing over to the side. Now that's going to be us. It's funny it's, though, because yeah, the, the, I feel like the Russians they do Dota events so much better, better than the English teams sometimes at events. They have, especially for like qualifiers, their hubs are like so professional and they have like these sick me- like people on. But yeah, I'll be interested to see. It can't be worse than last year. Do you remember last year's group stage where it's Machine by himself on a tiny chair? Yeah, I didn't like that. That was so poor, yeah. It's, like, mm. it's TI Did group you see the... like, Get a panel together, come on. Yeah, T- like the I saw a post that was just the panels over the years, and it just kept shrinking until it got to machine, just one person at a table. Yeah. Yeah. The couch goes into tables, goes into one person. No weatherman purge. He's not invited, is he? No, he's there. I mean, oh, last there. year I don't think they had Weatherman. No, page. they didn't. They didn't. And then uh, new player stream. I wonder if that will be a thing. They've Probably tried to not. do that before. I think Purge said he didn't want to do it last TI. Yeah. He didn't want to do new player stream. So with that said, that's the end of the new meta preview show. Join us again on Thursday for the first of the daily TI shows. We'll be releasing a pod every day straight after the action, trying to get it published and uploaded as soon as possible. With all these weird time zones, you can always count on us to give you the analysis and the reviews of the day. So hopefully see you then. Thanks to Marco Nado for joining me. I'm sure they'll be joining me again on Thursday. And until then, it's TI season. Get excited. Oh yeah.